say you guys are like me, and you hopped on the ESP32 hype train. It's a super cool chip, and it's very capable of a lot, but you quickly found out that it doesn't work like a normal Adreno. And that is, some things just don't work the same and are impossible to figure out. For me, I had a lot of trouble getting servos to work, and I wanted to use a servo for a radio control project with the ESP32. But the regular Adreno servo library just straight up doesn't work. And there are lots of libraries made by other people, but I found out that they don't work on my ESP32 dev board I made. So I had to figure out on my own a better way to control servos. And as it turns out, there's something built into the ESP32. You don't need any libraries or anything, and you can use it to control servos, and it's not too complicated. <laughs> So I cleaned off my breadboard, I cleared everything up, cleaned up my desk, and I opened a new sketch, which I named ESP32 Servo Test. And here is where I'm going to use the ESP32 LEDC function to be able to control my servo motor. Uh, LEDC is something you can use to generate PWM signals. So very quickly, I'm going to go over that first. So a quick rundown of PWM. Pulse smith modulation is a technique for creating analog signals from digital ones. PWM signals are comprised of two things, a frequency and a duty cycle. The frequency is how often the PWM signal repeats itself, and it's typically measured in hertz or inverse seconds. Basically, how many times a second does it happen? The duty cycle is usually described as a percentage of how long the signal is high, versus how long the signal is, versus how long the period is for the frequency. Here's a quick illustration. This is from the Adreno website about analog output. Uh, you can see what exactly that means. In this illustration, five volts is high and zero volts is low. And you can see that the frequency is how often it repeats itself. It's these green lines. So it would be how many times does this exact shape happen a second? That's what the frequency means. And here's examples of different duty cycles. 25% meaning it's high 25% of the entire time. 50% is it's high half the time, 75, so on. All right, now after a basic intro to PWM signals, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started on controlling the servo motor. But first, I'm just going to go ahead and generate a PWM signal just to show the basics of LEDC. The very first thing I'm going to use is something called LEDC setup. And this is going to be in my setup function in my Adreno sketch. So LEDC setup with a capital S. And this takes three arguments. The first one is the channel you select. The base ESP32 module has 16 channels. However, something like the ESP32 S2 only has eight. So using this method, I can control 16 servos. Uh, with this ESP, if I use something with an ESP32 S2, like I, what's on my dev board, I can only control 8 with this method. So there's 1 to 16 channels. I'm going to use the first channel, so I'm going to put in 1. The next thing is to define the frequency of my uh, ESP32 PWM signal. The frequency of my PWM signal. Uh, most servos run on 50 hertz, so I'm going to use that. I will go over the data sheet of my servo to get a better definition on things like the duty cycle that I need to use to control it. But to start with, I'm going to use 50 hertz. And then I need to define what resolution I want to use. Now the resolution is a power of 2, and it, it can go anywhere from 1 to 16. So something like 8 would be 256, 2 to the 8. Since numbers start at 0 in Adreno, it's actually two to 200, or 0 to 255. I'm going to use 8. Uh, most things like to revolve around 8. However, further in this video, I'm going to use a higher number because it gives me a little more granular control of my servo. I can choose smaller numbers. I'll probably use uh, 12 bits, which would be 496, I believe. The next thing I need to do is attach it to the pin I'm using, which in this case is going to be pin 13. So I'm going to do LEDC attach pin. Again, keep track of the capital letters there. I'm going to do 13 comma 1. And one here, the second argument, is the channel I'm using. So I'm attaching pin 13 to channel 1. That's what I've done here. And channel 1 is set up to use a 50 hertz signal with an 8-bit resolution. So perfect. That's all I need to do there. 
And then I'm going to, for the sake of demonstration, generate a PWM signal with a varying duty cycle that's just going to sweep up and down. So for the sake of that, I'm going to go ahead and define a variable. I'm going to name it duty, and I'll have it start at zero. And now here, I'm going to add in a couple for loops. I'm going to do for duty equals zero, semicolon. Duty is less than or equal to the maximum I can put, which in this case is 255 because 8-bit resolution, semicolon, and I'm going to do duty plus equals one. What that means is it's going to add one every time it executes the script. Perfect. Do that. Add in some brackets. And this is where I'm going to add in my LED C write function. And this is I pick the channel that I'm writing to, which is channel one in my case, and then the value I'm writing, which is going to be duty. Uh, because ESP32s run very fast, I'm going to add a bit of a delay here just to slow things down, so I'll be able to see it on uh, my oscilloscope. So there's that. It's going to run all the way up. I'm going to make another for loop, so I'll just copy this one, bring it down here, and I'll make it the inverse. So I'll do 255. I'll do greater than or equal to 0, and I'm going to do duty minus 1. And that's just going to be the inverse, so it'll be able to sweep up and down continuously. All right. And you can see there it is sweeping up and down. The frequency is 50 hertz, and it's sweeping completely through a PWM signal. And then and this is real time what a PWM signal looks, looks like. like. Right? It's a constant frequency, but the width of that square gets wider or narrower, depending on the value you set it as. OK, so I just went ahead and directly hooked up the servo to the PWM signal that's being generated. And you'll see something weird happens. It moves for a little bit, and then it stops moving altogether. And to figure out the answer to this, we need to go into the data sheet for my specific servo. So for this servo, it uses a 50 hertz uh, frequency. However, it shows here that there are different positions based on the width of this. And actually, the maximum, the plus 90 degrees, is a 2 millisecond pulse in this 20 millisecond period, which is a 50 hertz a PWM signal. So that means that it's just very quickly going through every angle and then every PWM duty cycle above two milliseconds, it's just not doing anything. It doesn't know what to do. And the minimum actually as well is a one millisecond pulse. So that means we need to do a little bit of math and figure out what cycles, uh, what widths we should use. Duty cycles are commonly defined in percentages. So we can go ahead and just do percentages ourselves. So since it's a one millisecond pulse on a 20 millisecond frequent or uh, period, we can do one divided by 20, and that gives us 5%. So it's a 5% uh, duty cycle will get you uh, the very first position, that negative 90 degrees. So what I can do is take that 5%, multiply it times 255, and I get about 13. So let's define my initial as 13, 13, 13. And now we can do the same thing for the maximum, uh, which in that case was 2. So we'll do 2 divided by 20 gives us 10% or 0.1. Multiply that times 255, and we get 25.5. So that means the maximum. I'm going to make it 20, I'll make it 26, 26. And I'll go ahead and upload this now and see what happens. So it's going through every position theoretically, but you see it's not moving a full 180 degrees like it's supposed to. Uh, and that is for one of three reasons. One is that the data sheet is wrong. Two is that my math was wrong. Or three, the servo is a clone and doesn't actually behave as it's supposed to. The last option is most likely correct. So in this case, I'm going to have to do a little more work to figure out what exactly is going on with my Adreno, how I can control the full 180 degrees that I expect to. I'm going to show you my method for figuring out what the best numbers are for the minimum and maximum position. And for that, I'm going to use a little potentiometer. Go ahead and hook this up on my breadboard. Now I understand this is a little uh, tedious. However, in the end, I'll be able to get very accurate control of my servos, so it is worth it. 
but I'm going to go ahead and go through and just write a very basic script to read the value from the potentiometer. This is reading at a resolution of 12 bits, so I can use the Adreno map function to bring it down to something a little more uh, in the ballpark of what I'm using. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I can actually just directly write this value to the servo, and we'll be able to control the servo with the potentiometer. All right, so now we can see the value the potentiometer is set at, and we can keep an eye on the servo and see when it moves. Oh, already started to move, so it seems at a value... It seems its minimum value is, is 5. A value of 5, and then I'll turn it all the way up. So it seems, yeah, 33 is the maximum. So our numbers are way off. We can go ahead and now write those into our, our for loop and see what happens. Perfect. Looks like it's doing a full 180. I'll slow it down a bit. Uh, I'll increase the delay so we can get a better look. There you go. That's a full 180 degree motion using the values from 5 to 33. One thing here, uh, you can go ahead and take all this script here and control servos just the way you want, but this is very limited. In the regular Adrenos, you can use a, a degree from 0 to 180 degrees to control the servo, versus I can only change the number from 5 to 33, which is not a very big amount. So let's go ahead and change that. Like I said before, we can change the resolution of, of our, our signal. So let's change this to be 12 bits, which we can do the math. 12, 2 to the 12 is 496. That'll give us a massive amount. And since we already know these values, we can just take them. Um, again, in percentages, so I'll do 5 divided by 255. That's that percentage. Multiply that by 4095. And we get 80 as our new minimum. So it was the old one, 33. So 33 divided by 255. It's this number times 4095. Oops. Equals 530. It's moving very slowly because there's a lot more numbers for it to get through. So let's lower our delay amount. So now you can see after plugging those numbers in, I get very refined control of the servo. It's moving quite consistently and quite slowly. And moving to what looks like about 180 degrees. Ooh, it's moving a little more than 180 degrees. Uh, and that is something you find in some servos. So there may be, need to be a little more finicking to figure out what exactly is 180 degrees. So I changed my potentiometer values to be from 0 to 600. Actually, let's make it 70. So this way we can try to find a more accurate minimum because it could be less than 80. It may not be exactly 80 and a more accurate maximum. So I'm doing a bit less than the minimum, a bit more than the maximum. And I'm going to use a potentiometer to try to find those exact values. And you can see here is parallel. It. So I'm going to twist it until it's exactly at 180 degrees around. And that'll be my new maximum right about there. So you see 484. And now if we watch the server, we'll see it turn exactly 180 degrees. Just about exactly. We can get even more refined using a higher bit number, um, dialing it in with the potentiometer and adjusting those values. For now, this will work for most projects unless you need a high degree of angled accuracy, which for if you did, you probably wouldn't be using a servo like this. You'd probably be using a stepper motor. Listen, I hear you saying, hey, Thomas, I like to use degrees. I want to use degrees to say the, de the amount that my servo is moving. I don't like doing these random numbers. Well, that's pretty easy. We can do that with the map function inside of the Adreno IDE. What we can do instead of these weird numbers, uh, we can just put do, say, 0 and 180 degrees. Perfect. Do 180 degrees and 0. But now instead, we'll add another bit of code. That's going to be my duty cycle. Uh, and we'll add another variable. Oh, Degrees. No, just three. <laughs> Have it start at zero. Okay, so now that we've changed these, we're going to now map our signal duty equals map of degrees. 
which ranges from 101 to 180 degrees, and the range of duty cycle, which is 80 to 485. 485. Semicolon, and now it'll write the duty. So now I can input a degree with whatever I want. Uh, for example, I can do it with the potentiometer now. I'll do 1 to 180 degrees. And I'll just copy over this, this map function we made. There you go. You can see now I'm controlling it with the potentiometer. And the potentiometer, if I open up the serial console, giving me numbers in degrees. Whoop, all the way up to 180. And I can even bring it right in the middle. I wanted to look at... 90 degrees there you go well thank you for watching let me know if there's anything else you guys want help with or if this was helpful to you or if it wasn't if you have any questions leave comments i will answer them feel free to like and subscribe and thank you all for watching